call for improved relations, China's president lays out his country's position in a highly anticipated meeting with the U.S. Secretary of State in Beijing. And more on that top story now, the high level and high stakes meetings in Beijing as U.S. Secretary Antony Blinken visits China. Joining us to talk through this is Professor Steve Sung. He's director of the China Institute Center at SOAS University of London. Uh, Professor Sung, uh, two days of meetings for Antony Blinken. So in ascending order of seniority, foreign minister, top foreign policy official, and then Xi Jinping himself. But then descending order in terms of the amount of time he got, seven and a half hours, three hours, and then just half an hour. How would you rate the success or the lack of success in Mr. Blinken's trip? Well, Mr. Blinken went to China expecting to reopen a effective channel of communication with China with the Chinese government being very reserved about that to begin with. So much so that we didn't even know whether Blinken would meet with Xi Jinping. Now he had these long discussions with Qin Gang and then Wang Yi, but a symbolic meeting with Xi Jinping, which kind of shows that Blinken's diplomacy has worked. He may not have secured any agreement with China but he has re-established a channel of communication and a nodding from Xi Jinping that he is okay with that. That's a dip diplomatic achievement. So it's not just that he has opened this channel of communication, he has done so without, at least as far as we know, making any serious concrete concessions on Washington's side. I think you are absolutely right there. The long conversations between Blinken and Qin Gang and with Huang Yi would suggest that both sides re restated their positions very clearly. There was a bit and a lot of repetition and talking past each other. But Blinken essentially was able to put America's position through. So did the Chinese uh, partners of his, without either side feelings that the way they did it would cause the other side to um, react negatively. So the final symbolic meeting with Xi Jinping could take place. So in that sense, it was a uh, success, but there was nothing very specific that they have agreed some, if there were... See. Uh, it's not just, uh, oh, sorry for cutting in like this, but it's not just a restating of positions. The positions are so far apart in quantity and quality. So put it this way. So Wang Yi says uh, the U.S.-China relationship is at a low point, but the root cause is the U.S. having a wrong perception of China. And Mr. Blinken, essentially his main point is we need to manage competition through open channels of communication to ensure competition does not veer into conflict. They're not actually addressing at any point why they disagree. They're just saying we disagree, but we let's not let this get into a fight. This is Blinken. For China's side, it's you are in the wrong. It's not just restating positions, is it? Well, it is largely restating their positions because what we had before the meeting was that relationship were deteriorating, they were sliding, and there was a risk that the slide could result in something very nasty. And the Chinese were basically saying that America was responsible for all the problems. And until America ratify its acts, there's really nothing for us to talk about. Now, they had many, many hours of talks and then agree that we will continue to talk so that we avoid uh, the relationship sliding down further with neither side conceding on their own positions, but willing to talk. So in that sense, they have temporarily at least arrested that slide in relationship. All right, Prof Sang, today all the attention is on Xi Jinping meeting Mr. Blinken. But if we look back to May the 21st, when uh, Joe Biden, the US president at that point, said he, was, he foresaw 
uh, an imminent thaw in US-China relations. And there was considerable skepticism then because that was at the G7 where they just released a joint statement in which China was explicitly criticized on activity in the East and South China Seas, human rights in Tibet and Xinjiang. So I think there was disbelief that there would be any kind of thaw. And yet, possibly, do you see this as Mr. Biden telling his subordinates, we need to do this, as Xi Jinping has told his subordinates, this relationship has to be managed. Is this a, are we seeing leaders plus subordinates acting together to improve this relationship? I think you put the nail on the head, hit the nail on the head here. Uh, however powerful Biden as the president of the United States may be, he's no prophet. He could not have foreseen anything. All he really had done was that he was going to create the, the conditions for the relationships to improve. Now, since there's a limit to what he could actually do with the Chinese, he could only get his side, the American side, to adjust the way how they manage relationship with China in a way that would make it possible to have this kind of communication without the Americans conceding the basic position of the United States. And that's exactly what has happened. So yes, uh, Biden's commitment as the top leader in the United States was uh, responsible for this. But of course, Blinken's diplomacy was also responsible in making it a reality. All right, thanks so much for that, Professor Steve Sung, Director of the China Institute Center at SOAS, University of London. Thank you.